Hi, I'm Jim McCarthy from makeamarimba.com and Custom Marimbas Canada and this is just a quick video to go through some basics on tuning a marimba bar and to answer hopefully a couple of questions that I get all the time. One is just about the basic fastest way of going through the process of tuning a bar, how to remove timber quickly and get the nodes the right shape that we want. The other is about finding the nodes and the mystery that is what we call the salt test and, uh, and why I do it the way I do it. A lot of times I have people say, why can't you just measure the nodal point from the end? And well, timber is a non-conforming um, sort of a substance, so it's going to be a little bit different for every bar. But also, it depends on the bar where those uh, nodes are going to be. The nodes actually move as you go through the process of tuning. So we're going to salt test to find the nodes, and we actually do it twice. And uh, the first time, as I'm going to show you, is just simply to determine uh, which side of the bar we want to cut the arch from. Once we've determined that we can go through the rough tuning process to tune the bar down to um, almost pitch. I'll, I'll leave about a semitone or one note if you like uh, headroom so I tune it down to one note above the final pitch before I then go and do the second salt test. And I'm, I'm going to go through all of that now quickly show you why we do it that way and how the nodes will actually move further out as we rough tune the bar and uh, and how the salt testing then needs to be done a second time to find the actual nodal position and so forth. So we're going to start, I have one bar already rough tuned, this is a C3 so it's tuned to C sharp 3 and this is the one we're going to do, this is a B2 so we're going to tune it to the C3. So these two notes are right next door to each other, everything about them should be very very similar, that's why we have this one that's already done and this one that's just a bar blank cut and um, I'll basically just cut to the right dimensions and, and we're going to go from that. Okay, I've got my safety gear which is going to be good for preventing dust. Step number one is just to use the bell sander or whatever you have to make the, all the faces and edges of the bar nice and smooth, shampoo them off. Oh, this is what we do, uh, this is what we call making a bar blank essentially, getting the bar just in its basic form ready to be rough tuned. All gear on. Now we have a bar with nicely chamfered corners and it's a nice even orange colour, making lots of orange dust already, and uh, smooth ready to go to the next stage. Okay, so now we have this bar, the first step is to salt test it, and uh, for this, just have the little rig you can see, you're probably familiar with this already if you've seen some of my other videos, I have the rubber bands set apart roughly around where the nodes are going to be which to start with for a bar blank should in fact be roughly two ninths of the node, uh, two, no two ninths of the length rather, the node should be from the end. So I'm just going to hold one end a little bit to stop it bouncing so much, but essentially with this bar I shouldn't have to do that too much, it should get a very quick result. And we can see this is a fairly standard bar, um, the nodes are in fact about two ninths of the length from the end. But also what you'll notice is they're on a bit of an angle, and this is very typical, almost every single bar you ever do will be on some sort of an angle, they will never be straight across, that's very rare. Now because this is a B, um, what this angle is telling me that I actually want this top face that I'm looking at now to be the top face of the bar. You'll notice the, the nodes are going slightly on, the, on this angle rather than that angle across the bar. And because this is a B, uh, that means that the strings will actually be slightly angled this way uh, as they go through the holes in the bar. Uh, if it was, say, for example, a C sharp, then the, the outer strut would be angling from big to small this way, and so the, the string hole, particularly on the outsider, outside hole, is going to be quite angled this way, and that's going opposite to the basic direction of the node anyway. So what, what this first salt test is really just to determine is, is not really where the nodes are, because that's going to actually change, which we'll show you shortly. Um, but just which direction? Now, as you rough tune the bar, the direction might change a little, but the basic orientation 
shouldn't change. So you can see this is um, going, I'm going to just do a, a little mark on the outside edges of these to show the angle, and maybe one in the middle as well, and right through the salt there. I'm just putting pencil lines on there, and that just shows you the current position of those nodes, and also the direction, and we know now this is going to be the top face of the bar, the, sh the string holes should be drilled on that same angle. So what I'm going to do now that I've determined this is the top face of the bar, I'm going to turn it over and put an X right there in the middle of the bar because that's the side I'm cutting from and I'm going to label the bar up here B2 so you know what it is. Um, okay, so now that I've done that, I can put the bar down and this is why I have the C bar, one right next door to it. Um, this is pre-done, tuned to a rough tune to a C sharp. So I'm just putting it on top end for end and uh, getting it as close to the middle as I can. If you really want to measure it, you can. I'm looking at the far side of the bar, trying to match it up so it's perfectly even. Let's do that now. And I'm just going to trace the arch shape like that. Put some rough lines up there, that helps. Flip the bar over, trace that same arch shape. It won't be perfect. It doesn't matter. Trace that same arch shape roughly on the other edge of the bar as well. And that gives us something to work towards now as we're cutting the bar. I can now put this C bar away. And this B, which I'm going to tune to C, now has the arch shape uh, roughly put on it. It won't be perfectly that, but it's going to be very close. So I can cut almost to that line. Um, I'll leave a little bit of headroom we're actually using the tuner as we go, you'll see that. Okay, so to rough out the bar, um, I'm just using my table saw here. Uh, you could have a dado blade here if you wanted, that would be more efficient, but uh, I'm just using the regular blade. It takes a little bit longer. Most important thing here is to set the depth of the blade. I'm going to take that arch shape that I've got here, put it right next to the blade here, and I'm going to set the depth so it goes, yeah, not quite to the line. I'm going to leave a good eighth of an inch at least, probably a little bit more before the line, but I'm just seeing that depth and uh, and then I know that as I cut through the bar here it's not going to go through the bits that I don't want. Here I've got my slider, I've actually put a piece of wood on there just so that it goes right close to the blade here, gives me a little bit more control. Um, I'm not going to use the safety gauge here, but uh, you can do that. All the equipment of course needs to go on. and. I'm just going to rough that out. So, as you can see here, I haven't been too fussy with getting it perfect here. Those will snap dry right off. We don't have to be too worried about that. But if I show it to you closely, you'll probably be able to see also that uh, I haven't gone right to the edges of the of the lines here. Um, you can leave it at that. I'm going to now make the, the blade a little shallower and just uh, go a little further out, just roughly approximating or getting close to that, uh, that arch shape there once again. So a little narrow, a little shallower. And uh, the second guy, the very second I put that uh, on the belt sand, you'll see those disappear. Let's have a look at that. So now you should be able to see pretty clearly that we have that rough shape and I'm just going to use the belt sander now to get closer to that curve without going to the pencil line.
Okay, so now we should be able to see, uh, I mean it's fairly rough yet, but uh, at least it's a smooth arch shape and uh, we'll refine that as we rough tune it. If you can see the pencil line there, I'm not sure if you can, but you might be able to see that uh, we're not really that close to the pencil line yet. We're about an eighth of an inch away from it, two or three millimeters if you're in metric. And uh, we'll go and start the tuning process using the tuner now. Okay, so for um, rough tuning, I don't really need a stroboscope, just a little guitar tuner is actually, I find that way easier. It's a chromatic tuner. Uh, we'll measure the fundamental. And that's telling me an A. And uh, I can measure the first overtone there, which is giving me a G, so they're kind of close. Okay, just as a double check here, here's that previous bar. This is, you can see the C sharp bar or the C bar, which is roughly tuned to the C sharp. You can probably see it get it going to the C sharp there or thereabouts. Once again, we don't have to be too fussy. I'll just put that bar to one side. You can hear this bar at A uh, still has almost an octave to go. Um, and we're going to triple tune the bar, of course. And if you want more information about this, you can uh, have a look at the makerimber.com building guides. That'll go through the process of, of fine tuning these bars a little bit more in a bit more detail. But uh, essentially now I'm just going to go through that process of tuning this bar more. So we're about halfway through the rough tuning process now. You might see I've got a lot closer to the line there and uh, I'll test that in a minute. The one thing you might notice is that it's much smoother now. You'll develop your own technique depending on your tools. You'll notice I use this back and forth motion there on the belt sander and that helps to make uh, the amount of sanding along the length of the bar nice and even. Anyway, we'll finish the rough tuning. Okay, so the rough tuning is finished. Um, you can be, you pretty much can't see any of that pencil mark. It's actually been gone. We've sanded right past it. This bar, after all, is lower than the C. So we went a little further. But uh, it's now pretty much rough tuned. And it is, of course, being a B2, it's triple tuned. So our fundamental, because it's a B, we're tuning to C. And here we go, just a little bit above the C. Our first overtone, two octaves above that. The C just below, close enough, and then our second overtone is supposed to be an E, and there it is, pretty much right bang on the E. So that's a perfect rough tuned bar, one semitone above pitch for the B. Now let's go and have a look at what happens for the next stage of salt testing. Okay, so I'm going to put this bar back on the salt testing rig, exactly the same. Here are the marks, I'll make them a little darker, they might have just rubbed off a little bit. Okay, hopefully you can see those on the video. Not I'll point them out with an arrow or something. Okay, so you can see this is the exact position that the nodes were in. Now, because we've rough tuned the bar, we salt test again, we'll see something interesting. First of all, this is going to be much easier because the bar is lower in pitch, it's going to have a stronger vibration. Um, it's going to get a much more easy result for the salt test. Hold it a little bit. And uh, the most important part of this is that you can see that here's the niche where the node was originally before we started tuning. Now it's out here, almost a full inch, it's uh, or a centimeter and a half maybe. It's definitely moved a long way further out than it was. And the angle for this one is about the same. This one's actually straightened out a little. The line kind of goes like this. 
Um, so the angle has actually changed a little, but you'll notice it's still basically the same angle. It hasn't gone completely the other way. It's just a little less of an angle. But most important is the position of the nodes. This is now, once we rough tune this, or fine tune it rather, and get it down to actual pitch, it might move a, a fraction again, but that's going to be a very, very small movement. Um, so we don't really have to worry about that too much. It's now so close that uh, we can get the dimensions of the frame from that. All I'm going to do here now is put one nut mark right in the middle, showing the kind of angle and position, the exact position of that, and uh, erase the erase the other because that was just for show. Um, so what we have now is a bar which is rough tuned to uh, exactly where it needs to be, one semitone above pitch, and the nodes angles are marked and the actual position, the final position of the nodes is marked. Now, in order to produce the finished instrument, you're going to have to do this with the whole row of bars from whatever your bottom one is to the top one, usually a C7. And once they're all rough tuned, we can use these marks, lining all the bars up, correctly spaced half an inch apart, and then create the, um, the measurements you need to get the frame exactly correct from there. Uh, one word of caution, of course, is that once you're doing all that, you'll get the measurements for the frame. Don't drill the bars yet. Okay, that's drilling the bars and then fine tuning is, is pretty much the last step. We now move from the bars to the frame, and uh, we create the dimensions of the frame such that the struts that suspend the bars will sit as close to as, as possible to exactly underneath these nodes, finding a line of best fit. Uh, once again, if you need to know more about that, look at the building guides at makeamember.com and that'll show you how to go through the process of creating the frame and getting the measurements for that. Um, but once again, the word of caution, wait till you've finished your frame, or at least got the frame construction part, the base construction done. Space the bars then out, out on the frame and then mark the final um, lines that you're going to drill on exactly on top of those struts because no matter how uh, good the lumber is you buy, no matter how well you make the frame, it, it's never quite perfect. The, the, the struts might be a little warped or what have you. So don't drill your holes and mark out the final lines and drill the holes until you actually have that frame rough built. You've marked out the exact lines on the bar uh, so that they sit exactly on top of those struts. Learn more at makearimba.com. Come, come and visit the Facebook page at Custom Rimbers uh, Canada. And uh, we'll see you next time.